Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Are you really an indie music fan if you haven't heard of Phoebe Bridgers? I mean, how could you have not? Even if her music doesn't connect with you, it's becoming increasingly difficult to ignore her talent. Between releasing two solo records, forming an all-female supergroup, and producing for other indie artists, the singer-songwriter has guest appeared on tracks with everyone from Lord Huron to Fiona Apple, The National, Kid Cudi, Bright Eyes, The 1975, Haley Williams, Lord, and soon to be on Taylor Swift's upcoming Red Redux and The Killer's upcoming Pressure Machine. In just a few short years, Phoebe Bridgers has gone from rather unknown to an absolute indie darling. The release of her sophomore record Punisher garnered her four Grammy nominations, including Best New Artist, and saw her labeled as one of the most important artists of this generation. Let's take a closer look at how Phoebe Bridgers became indie's new cult favorite. Phoebe Lucille Bridgers always knew music was what she was going to do. As a child, and after being taught a few guitar chords by her father, Phoebe would make some extra cash by busking for hours at her local farmer's market, coffee shops, and street corners. It was clear she was extremely musically talented, opting to play guitar in lieu of homework. While studying vocal jazz in high school, she gravitated towards playing in rock bands and later as a solo act around Los Angeles. Phoebe managed to snag a few commercial gigs for Apple, Taco Bell, and Home Goods, which helped her pay rent while she worked on her music. Her career really began gaining momentum after she met singer-songwriter Ryan Adams, who called her the next Bob Dylan, and who would go on to produce her EP, Killer. The pair wound up having a short-lived romance that would later be the basis for the cheeky breakup track, Motion Sickness. In the following years, Phoebe would open for Julian Baker and later Connor Oberst of Bright Eyes. And shortly after signing to indie label Dead Oceans in 2017, Phoebe released her debut LP, Stranger in the Alps. Written after a bout of depression, Phoebe's lyrics here are intimate and have her confronting uncomfortable realities. I'm so blue all the time, and that's just how I Upon hearing Funeral, John Mayer tweeted that it signaled the arrival of a giant. Her stone-cold stare of a voice seems to capture the mundane of everyday existence, putting listeners inside of situations. With my back to the shoreline, I dreamt that he drowned. Dream Receiving widespread acclaim, Alps would make her a breakout star and an in-demand performer, leading towards collaborations on tracks with Xander Hawley, Storefront Church, and Lord Huron. Take me back. In 2018, the young artist teamed up with Julian Baker and Lucy Dacus to form the supergroup Boy Genius. Their six-song EP spawned simply because the three wanted to write together, and it's a collaboration that ultimately acted as a therapy group for the trio. But this was just the beginning of Phoebe's serial collaborations. Better Oblivion Community Center saw Phoebe pair with Bright Eyes' Connor Oberst for a charming folk rock record. That same year, she'd released tracks alongside The National and Fiona Apple. On, on top of these joint efforts, the young artist was still working towards her sophomore release. And in 2020, we'd finally get a glimpse of what was to come. Then the 1975's Notes on a Conditional Form saw Phoebe featured on four tracks. Oh, and then we saw the release of Christian Lee Hudson's debut, Beginners. Nothing's going to change it. Her bandmate's album that she produced, before finally dropping her sophomore offering, Punisher. Phoebe's sound can be described as country-tinged indie folk rock sprinkled with electronic undertones. On occasion, the instrumentals sound like they're decaying, quivering, or just barely hanging in there. I feel something when I see you. Her music is beautiful vocally and instrumentally, but the music never seems to be the main focus. 
Rather, it's on the poetry that Phoebe writes. With already a diverse, complex body of work, Punisher hardly felt like only her second studio release, considering how well we'd come to know her songwriting. Tracks like Kyoto and Chinese Satellite have her speaking about dissociation, or like Phoebe puts it, living outside your body when cool shit is happening. Her writing is filled with witty observations, anxiety, and a dash of existential dread. Where Stranger in the Alps was rooted in trauma, Punisher documents Phoebe's journey in dealing with that trauma and learning to enjoy life. That's not to say that it's all doom and gloom either, though. Songs will have you laughing at one moment and crying in another, sometimes within the same track. Punisher was likely the most emotional and saddening record of 2020. It's topically diverse, diving into love relationships, family, self-discovery, nostalgia, lucid dreaming, futurism, regret, space exploration, death, and plenty more. Yet the album remains cohesive because it's all about Phoebe. Her lyricism is direct and carries a level of detail that makes these songs sound so confessional and sincere. And this sort of openness is somewhat shocking, because she's not afraid to normalize what she thinks about all day. It's a sense of vulnerability that takes a great deal of courage to share with just anyone, much less an audience of thousands, if not millions. And that confidence is contagious. We're given access to one individual's fears, feelings, and experiences. Someone who's absolutely terrified, but hopeful for whatever the next chapter may bring. And deep down, there's a bit of that in all of us. Along with Punisher, 2020 saw Phoebe record tracks alongside Maggie Rogers, Haley Williams, and Kid Cudi. I told myself I cannot grow love me, love She'd also start her own label, Saddest Factory, before garnering four Grammy nominations. She'd start 2021 by smashing her guitar on Saturday Night Live, and is already looking to have another standout year when it comes to collaborations. Being featured on Julian Baker and Lucy Dacus' most recent records, Lending vocals to Lord's latest comeback singles. And finding a guest spot on Taylor's new version of Red and the killer's upcoming tune, Runaway Horses. Like runaway horses in a fever till the end. It's become fairly difficult to ignore the talent of Phoebe Bridgers. Her songwriting connects with listeners on a whole other level. Her serial collaborations with every indie artist under the sun help thrust her into the spotlight, and it's a momentum that doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. So how did Phoebe Bridgers become indie's new cult favorite? By following the original success story formula. A healthy blend of talent, knowing the right people, and persistent, punishing work. Speaking of work, if you've been following the channel for about the last year, you'll notice that my design skills have improved greatly. A lot of that comes from practicing or just trying to emulate other designers and their work. But more recently, what's been inspiring my designs are actually user interfaces, websites. Where graphic design is usually a flat 2D image, today's web pages are living and dynamic designs. It's also just an aesthetic that's usually clean and minimal and just gets information across in a very clear way. Rich Armstrong has a class on the basics of web design layout that covers positioning, depth, management, margins, padding, and a ton of other new techniques that I wouldn't have really considered using before. And you can try out the class by using the first link in the description below. Whether it's graphic or web design, animation, or even some audio production tips, Skillshare has always been a resource that's helped bring my skills to the next level. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for the creative and the curious. It's made specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new classes to help add to your personal toolkit. But if you want to try out Skillshare beforehand, the first 1,000 middle eight viewers to use the link below can get a one month free trial of premium membership. So try it out, explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity with Skillshare. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give the video a like rating, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified of when the next episode goes live. Support us on Patreon if you could be so kind, and if you're looking for some new music, try out our bi-weekly podcast Playmate where I interview artists and chat music. It's all in the box below. Again, thanks for watching, and keep listening to Phoebe Bridgers.